What's up guys? We are back with a Mezco review today, which definitely is a little bit out of the ordinary because I just never find the time to do these, but we're taking a look at the most recent sort of secret drop figure, and that would of course be the White Skull Agent. So this is a Again, a secret release. They didn't announce it. It just went up on the Mezco site. And it's also a super limited release. This guy is limited to 500 pieces. And even though he didn't sell out super quick, I mean, it was 15-ish minutes or so, it still was really tough to get for folks because of the fact that they didn't announce it. So you either knew or you didn't know. And thankfully, I was able to get my hands on one, so we're going to take a look at it now. Like a lot of the more recent releases, like... Uh, Gomez of Death, Crimson Gomez, stuff like that. This guy doesn't come in any kind of fancy packaging. It's just a standard black box that happens to have a sticker on it with the white skull. So presentation isn't all that great, but at the same time, I don't need a $20 price increase because he comes in a lunchbox. So I'm, I'm happy that we got something that's pretty basic, holds all the stuff in there. It's just not anything flashy to look at. So let's do it. Let's pull this guy out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our White Skull Agent 112 Collective figure. This guy seems to be, I mean, I'm still not the Mezco expert by any means. You know, I've said that. I'm not the Mezco expert. But this guy seems to be very Gomez-like, which makes a lot of sense, considering the fact that he is tangentially related to Gomez and whatever his the predecessor or whatever he is to Gomez in the Gomez-verse. And uh, I think he's a pretty solid figure. This is, of course, kind of an odd one because he is so limited. And he is really just a kit bash. Like, this is not, like, a unique figure by any means. There's there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of reuse here on this guy, which is fine for me because, you know, I don't have tons of Mesco figures. But uh, this guy does seem pretty cool. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. We've got a head that can look up really far. He can look down really far. You've got, like, probably more tilt than you need. And then you've got full rotation. Of course, the neck is independently articulated uh, from the head there. The arms go out at the shoulders. They, of course, rotate, but you do have to watch because he does have a, uh, a sweater on here, but you can get him to go all the way around. Uh, you've got... I don't know if there's a butterfly joint in there or not. It doesn't really feel like it. You've got a bicep rotation, of course, right there. We've got our double-jointed elbow, so he goes all the way. And then you've got your ball hinge at the wrist, rotation, and then hinge in whatever direction you choose. As far as the crunch goes, he goes back uh, pretty far, about that far. And then he goes forward about that far. You've got your tilt side to side. Really good. Like, that's, that's really nice. It feels very, very fluid, too. So I'm really happy with the way he moves. And then, of course, you've got good twist all up in there as well. Legs go out about that far. Rip the crotch out of those pants. They kick forward about that far. They kick backwards slightly. There is a thigh cut up there, but I don't know how useful that is on this kind of guy because, of course, the pants do uh, get in the way, but it does help a little bit. And then you've got double jointed knees. And then there is ankle rotation down here, and you've got a little bit of rocker, but these boots are definitely a hindrance. Like, they definitely get in the way because they don't really allow for much clearance between the actual foot and the ankle itself. So he kicks up and down a little bit, and then you've got a tiny bit of rocker, but if there's one area where he is hindered, it is definitely at those ankles just because of the design of those boots. They do seem to uh, overall limit the range of motion there, but otherwise he is very, very nimble, very mobile, and in a general sense, quite easy to pose. As far as the overall look and feel, I'm not really sure how much there is to talk about with this guy because there is, there's a lot to say, but at the same time, like, he's a guy with a skull and he's wearing all black. Like, that's really what it is. I think a lot of it for me comes down to the overall construction of this figure because, again, you know, I'm not, I'm not a huge Mezco guy. I've been dipping my toe, well, too much into it lately this past year. And I really like the way this guy feels, just from a construction standpoint. This uh, sweater, this spy turtleneck that he has on, it fits him really well. Like, it doesn't hinder him. It looks good. It's tailored nicely. And I guess that's what it's going to be, how well the clothing fits him. And the same way for the pants. There's nothing crazy about them. They're just some sort of cargo pants, really. But they fit him well. They're not overly baggy. The material feels good. Uh, it's not the same material as the sweater, so there is a little patterning difference here. The belt is, is well done as far as implementation goes, so it is, of course, like its own piece. It's plastic. And then the, uh, the 
the uh, actual straps on it are, are painted to give it a little bit of definition and just sort of bring out the sculpt a little bit more, just to differentiate it from the pants so it's not sort of like a black void there. I do have the harness on them already because I figure this is something that most folks are going to always use. I think it breaks up the overall design really well because it, of course, adds a lot of white. So you've got a slot here for uh, storage for some clips, storage for a gun, and just I think it it sort of flows well from the head to the chest to the belt to kind of bring him down a little bit rather than him just being this sort of black void, no pun intended for, for Mezco stuff. But I do think he looks, I think he looks really good. I mean, he is a, a, a simple sort of kit bash kind of figure. But for me, this is a fun figure. He moves really well. And then this design kind of lends itself to the overall idea of this figure. And the clothing sits on him well. It hangs on him well. And it's tailored really nicely. The one area where I feel like they maybe could have done a little bit more, honestly, is the head. And it's not because I don't really like this head, but because they gave us something recently that I think elevates this head quite a bit. So this is just sort of the standard skull that we see a lot. Uh, you know, we got these in the bag of skulls. It's just a stark white one, and it looks pretty good on its own with like the black void in there for, I keep saying that, black void for the eyes and the nose, and then you've got those sort of nasty teeth. But what I really would have liked is for them to have done for this head what they did for the Crimson Cranium 2-pack to actually give it like those pupils that are in there. You know, that red head has those yellow eyes. This guy could have had something similar, some white ones in there or something like that, just to make him stand out a little bit more because this seems almost too generic to me when I have a dozen of those heads already sitting on a shelf or, you know, even go so far as to use one of the Doc Nocturnal heads. But at the same time, this still does look really good. I just think they have a few other options that might have worked a little bit better for me personally in terms of, I don't know, the stuff that I prefer having gotten those new heads lately. And then as far as size comparisons go, we've got our White Skull Agent here in the middle with Marvel Legends Maverick on the left and with the Black Series uh, Super Commando Mandalorian on the right to give you an idea of what Hasbro figures look like. And then let's move those aside, and here he is with Super 7 Leonardo. And how about, because I can't get rid of these, a Plunderling. And then we'll move him aside, and here he is with a 7-inch figure, so a Super 7 uh, He-Man. And then we'll take Leo away, and we'll replace him with a Gomez figure. So here he is with the clan of the golden dragon uh gomez figure to give you an idea of what he looks like alongside another 112 collective and i mean they're basically the same so they should match up quite nicely but this guy's going to scale really well with pretty much anything in the six to seven inch range now as far as accessories goes this guy is pretty well loaded i would say there's only one thing that i, I truly think i'm kind of missing here but otherwise, he is pretty well stocked. The first thing we have to talk about, of course, is the fact that he comes with a trench coat. So this thing is uh, is much, much better than I expected it to be. I wasn't really sure what to expect uh, overall, because at first I thought that it didn't really look good on him uh, when I was seeing some original pictures. I just thought that I might not use it. But when I got it in hand, it was, it was tremendously different because it does fit him really nicely. It does feel really good. Uh, it's not too baggy. It very much uh, fits the figure like an actual jacket should. And while it's not wired, you can use the belt if that's what you would call this on a trench coat, I don't know, I've never owned a trench coat, to actually, uh, you know, support it, move it out of the way, and just sort of hoist it up. And that's that's really what, what kind of cinched it for me, is, uh, is that it would allow it to look a little bit more dynamic, not to mention the fact that, of course, it does work as an actual belt because it's wired, so you can uh, tie it up in front of him if you so choose. So I do really like that. I will likely, likely use that on him pretty much at all times because I think he looks infinitely cooler with the trench coat than if he was just some skull-headed dude in a turtleneck. Beyond that, of course, he does come with sort of a normal spread of accessories. We've got a series of hands that come in uh, the tray here, and I'm going to leave them in the tray for this. He does not come with two trigger finger hands, which is the thing that I, I think I'm missing, because I really wish he had two trigger finger hands. He has a two-finger pointing hand, a single pointing hand, We've got a wide grip hand. You've got a splayed finger hand. You've got your trigger finger hand, which is a right hand. We've got a, a sort of uh, triggering hand for his left, but it's not a gun hand. It's for like another kind of device. You've got a set of sort of posing but gripping hands. And then down there at the bottom, you've got a set of actual uh, gripping hands. So you've got 12 total hands. 
in addition, uh, or rather 10 in addition to what he comes with in the box. So you got a, a full dozen. And overall, I'm happy with him. I just wish he came with another trigger finger for his left hand since he does come with two guns. And those would be the machine gun that we've got here. And this guy does have a removable clip. So you can pop this out. The bullet inside of there is even painted, which I really do like. Uh, he does come with an extra clip, so you can have one in use and then one kind of in his hand ready to go. And then, of course, the sculpt on this gun is really nice. There's no real paint on it except for some finishing changes. So you've got a little bit of gloss instead of the uh, matte black, but I do really like that. And then we've got this sort of Luger style pistol, which again, no real paint except for some finishing changes. And then this guy also has a removable clip and you get two extras for that also. I am generally concerned when I have figures like that that I'm gonna lose the clip, but I do think it's a really cool and a little bit more of a premium style feature. We've got another tray of accessories here. So you've got a uh, pouch of explosives. So this is kind of like a C4. You've got some grenades, you got four of those, and they can clip on the harness that we've talked about previously. We've got the uh, combat knife. You've got the uh, detonator, which would work with one of those other hands that we talked about. And then we've got one of my favorite accessories. You've got a bullet with an explosive trail behind it that pegs into the gun. So you've got a uh, an actual effect piece. And I really like this. It's just a cool, different kind of effect. You don't normally get stuff like that, so it's a little more on the unique side. We've got a grappling hook with an actual uh, cord on the end of it so you can tie it to something and actually even repel or scale down something. This is the kind of accessory that I think is really cool. It's very versatile for a lot of folks. It's probably not something I'm going to use, but it's it's definitely up there. We've got the backpack, and this is an actual fun functioning backpack which has a uh, an actual clip that works. So you can, if you're nimble enough, you can unclip that to cinch it around his waist which is just crazy that this thing is as functional as, as it is. It's very much a normal backpack. And then it's even got some Velcro on it. There's just a piece of foam in there to keep it uh, to keep it shaped. So you've got that guy. And then we've got the, uh, the net here as well. So you can toss it over him if you want to capture the white skull agent. Otherwise, use it to capture his foes or throw Gomez in it or whatever you're going to do. It's really uh, stretchy. So you've got some some give on it, so it'll stretch this way. And there is a, a lot of size to it when you stretch it out like that. It's actually quite a bit bigger than it seems, so you probably get uh, some good functionality out of this guy. And then, of course, beyond that, we do get the, uh, the stand that is pretty common with Mezco stuff. So we've got uh, this guy here, which is done up in the white and black color scheme to match, of course, the white skull. And it does come with the arm that we get with Mezco stuff. So outside of the fact that this guy doesn't have a second trigger finger hand, I really think he's pretty well stocked. I just wish he came with that one thing. Otherwise, he's got just about everything I can think a figure, a character like this would probably need. So yeah, overall, I think this guy is pretty fun. Granted, he is super limited at this point, and he is going for stupid, stupid prices on the aftermarket. But as far as the figure itself goes, not taking that into consideration, I think for the price paid, it's a pretty fun figure. For someone like me who does not have a ton of Mezco figures, you know, I'm still, I'm still growing that collection, for better or worse, this guy is pretty fun. I do wish that maybe they had changed the head sculpt and given him that uh, that newer crimson cranium head. Not necessarily a red one, but you know what I mean. And then I wish he had a left trigger finger hand. I feel like that's a weird omission for a character that has two guns. Otherwise, though, he moves really well. Uh, I think the sculpt, as far as you know, the overall design, is really nicely done. The clothing looks really well done. It hangs nicely. It's tailored well. The material feels good. And then he comes with a really solid array of accessories. It's nice to get uh, something that's not a Gomez figure right now that is very Gomez-like for me. So that's kind of a cool little thing to throw in with all the Gomez figures that I'm building up. So if you got your hands on this one, this is a pretty solid figure. I don't know that I would even consider paying the current aftermarket prices for this guy. However, in fact, I definitely would not, and I would urge you probably to not do the same. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mezco 112 Collective White Skull Agent. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.